The next category of um, emergencies is respiratory emergencies. And so this is where people have trouble breathing. So the first type is hyperventilation. And hyperventilation is when they're breathing, uh, when the respiratory rate is really uh, rapid, is really fast, it's probably because they're upset. So the best way to treat someone with hyperventilation is to work with them and control their breathing. You know, bend down to their level, say, look at me, let's breathe together. And, and then you breathe in with them and you breathe out with them. So you're controlling their breathing. The important thing is that you have, you're very calm and collected because when you're calm and collected, they will uh, feed off of that and become calm and collected. Asthma is a very common one, so if someone who is having an asthmatic attack, I would hope that they have their inhaler with them, because remember, when we treat them, we want to make sure that their inhaler is there. Um, so you want to give them the inhaler to treat them. Anaphylactic shock. Anaphylactic shock is basically when they have a severe allergy reaction and they're in the shock um, state. And so when someone has that, what you can do is you can administer an EpiPen. So typically, if they're conscious, we give the EpiPen to them and we help them put the EpiPen in their tie. We help them with their EpiPen, but we do not actually poke them. They poke themselves. We can give everything to them, set it up for them so that they're ready to poke themselves. Of course, if it's an emergency, if they're completely unconscious, then you can actually go ahead and do it. But when they're conscious, we want them to do it. Lastly, we're going to look at acute airway obstruction. And acute airway obstruction is when they're actually choking, when there's something, a foreign body, or there's something stuck in their throat. So we want to encourage them to cough. If we cannot, um, if they're not able to remove it with coughing, then we're going to do the Heimlich maneuver, which is the choking maneuver, right? Where you where you put your fist in their, um, after, in their tummy and you kind of um, flick it up. Something you learn in CPR, right? So you do the choking uh, maneuver with them to relieve that foreign body that's stuck inside. Cardiovascular system emergency. So this is with the heart, right? Because cardio is heart. Angina pectoris, we know, is chest pain. So when they have chest pain, what we do is we give them nitroglycerin. And this is something that's also in our emergency kit. So we tell them to put the nitroglycerin underneath their tongue, and that helps relieve that chest pain. Now, if someone is having a heart attack and we give them nitroglycerin, one thing that we'll notice is that they're not finding any pain relief. And so that's a huge sign that they could be going through a heart attack. If their pain is not getting relieved by the nitroglycerin, then they're probably going through a heart attack. A key point here is that if we give them nitroglycerin and they are taking medication to treat erectile dysfunction, that could be really bad. So... It's really important to get their medical emergency, um, actually, sorry, it's very important to get their drug list to know what drugs they're on because if they're taking any erectile dysfunction drugs and you give them nitroglycerin, that could not be a good combination. Okay, and then cardiac arrest is when they're just not breathing. And when they're not breathing, this is when you would do CPR. You could also use an, use, um, an automated external defibrillator which is an AED, when we're going to look at that later on. And I'm sure when you do CPR, you probably have uh, got training in how to use an AED. Extra pyramidal reactions. So these are other emergency situations that can happen where um, all of a sudden they start having Parkinson-like movements where they're shaking a lot or the tongue is not coordinated, um, they're grimacing, right? So there are treatments that are available for um for those people, emergency drugs that they could give them, such as um, sometimes what actually uh, doctors will do is they'll give them an IV of um, Benadryl, and that relieves that Parkinson-like movements. Uh, sometimes people will have opioid overdose, and then to treat that, as we have learned, is um, naloxone or Narcan. That is a medication that could be given to someone who has an opioid overdose. People could be allergic to the local anesthetic agent, so when they get freezing them, they could be allergic to that. And so to treat that, um, some, so sometimes let's just say if they're allergic to local anesthetic and they start seizing or convulsing, which is which, which could happen, then we give them diazepam. 
So it all depends on what is happening, what type of reaction they're happen that's happening when they take that local anesthetic, and then we treat them accordingly. So when you look at the emergency kit in the dental office, this it, we usually have a level one first aid kit, and this is critical drugs. All dental offices should have these drugs. They should have epinephrine, which is like the EpiPen. And so EpiPen usually is good for when you um, are allergic to something. So if you got stung by a bee, if you have a, a peanut, a, a nut allergy, for example, and you're going into an anaphylactic shock, we want to give them epinephrine, right? Sometimes we'll give them for epinephrine for cardiac arrest if they're not breathing, or if they have a really bad asthmatic attack and their inhaler is not working. This is um, also known as Benadryl. So if they have a latex allergy, this is something you could give them. Um, oxygen, all offices would have oxygen, that's cylinder. Nitroglycerin, this is for um, if someone is going through chest pain, then we give them nitroglycerin. Glucose, if they have low blood sugar, so sometimes I'll have, I'm trying to see if I can find it here, but sometimes I'll have like those um, it's like a lozenge or it's like a, a round sugar candy that uh, they could give if they have low blood sugar. And then albuterol, which is for, it's just an inhaler. And the inhaler is used for, um, to open up the airways. Okay, so again, pay attention to these um, level one critical drugs, really important. We need to have all these, so epinephrine, diphenhydramine, oxygen, nitroglycerin, glucose, and albuterol. Level two drugs. Now these are drugs that people who have ACLS training, so people who have advanced cardiac life support training, and these are dentists who offer conscious sedation. This is what they would have in their drug kit. Okay, so I'll just go over maybe some of them. If they faint, for example, then, and sometimes I see this in a level one drug kit too, but if they faint, then we could uh, give them the ammonia spirits, which is just something you run along their nose and they they smell it and they start to wake up. If they're convulsing, if they're seizing, then we give them benzodiazepine or diazepam. Um, if they are severely uh, hypoglycemic, so that means their blood sugar is very low, then you give them a glucagon. Dextrose, right? There's just so many different things that you could give them, and this is something that you would see in a level two emergency kit. Naloxone is another one that you would see in a level two emergency kit. So if they overdose on opioid, then we give them that. So there's different medications. What I need you to focus on are the level one drugs. Now in your level one emergency kit, there's equipments and the equipments are syringes and needles, a tourniquet. This is like, you know, when you get your blood drawn, they tie this on your um, on your arm so that they can find your vein. Um, a system to give oxygen, so that oxygen cylinder and then the, the mask and everything to help you breathe. And then sometimes the nasal mask as well. And then AED, and AED is really, really important. All offices should have an AED. All buildings have an AED by law. Because um, this can save. So if someone's having a cardiac arrest, what they say is that if you give this to them within the within the five minutes that they're having a cardiac arrest, you have a 50% higher chance of saving them. So AED is really, really important. Okay, and then the medications that are listed here, or sorry, not medications, the equipments rather, that are listed over here are not stuff that I want you to worry about so much because those are level two and those are secondary devices and those are uh, needed for people that offer conscious sedation. So usually for us, it's only level one.